Hi guys, welcome back to another week at Kidopolis with Miss Jessie. Um, Mr. Jacob is behind the camera, so that's why you don't get to see him as much. Um, but I'm going to speak for him real quick when I say that we both miss you so much. Um, and we can't wait to see you guys. So how has your week been going? Um, let me know. Send me uh, some messages, maybe some emails, whatever you want, because I really miss you guys. Um, our theme this month is, and it's... Seriously, it's so funny how well the lessons um, that the the people who make the lessons, you know, Miss Miss Jessie and Mr. Jacob, we give you the lessons and we, we get ready for them. But, and your other teachers too, when we're back um, at church, they, they do a lot of prep too. But we don't actually make the lessons. We get it from a different company. And I think it's just so funny because the... Um, themes are just, they're so appropriate for everything that we're um, going through right now. It just matches our life so well. And I have a feeling that they didn't, they didn't make these. We, we, this was made before we knew it was going on. And I think that's just, uh, just gives us so much insight and like so much, um, should give us so much faith in God that he really wants us to be able to turn to him when times are weird or tough or anything like that. So um, this month from May, it's our theme is unstuck. Don't give up. Don't give up, guys. Keep going. Can you think of something that you've wanted to give up on recently? I know I have. Oh my gosh, I can I could sit here and talk to you guys probably for about forty two minutes about all of the things that I've wanted to give up on recently. Um, you know, projects. We're homeschooling the girls right now. Well, everybody's being homeschooled, right? We're e-learning. That's tough for us. It's tough for us parents, too. I know it's really tough for you kids. Um, sometimes you just don't even want to do the dishes, you know? But it's so important not to give up. Um, I want to know what, what's been tough for you. Let me know, okay? I want to hear from you guys. And that way I can pray for you and then we can talk about it, okay? Um, but now I want to bring us to um, a verse in our Bible. And this is, this is um, it's the Lord's Prayer, okay? The, um, Jesus, in case you are ever kind of confused about how to pray, you're not sure like what your prayer should be about, he literally tells us right here. This is in Matthew. And I, I memorized this when I was in school. Um... I, I had to memorize it, and I'm really glad I did. And sometimes when I'm praying, if I'm um, just a little bit, if I'm having a hard time focusing, right? Miss Jessie having a hard time focusing? That seems crazy. No, Miss Jessie has a hard time focusing a lot. So sometimes this prayer really helps me um, get to where I need to be in conversation with the Lord. Um, but it also is kind of good to use to have an idea of where your heart should be when you're talking to him. So um, it says, our Father who art in heaven, this one actually says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our debts, as we, have, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So those words in um, the Bible that I have in front of me are actually a little bit different than I learned exactly growing up. The exact words that I learned growing up, um, they are like in my brain and grain. So reading over it, it's a little bit tricky. You might have heard me stumble. And I think that's good. I think it's important for me to go over this prayer in the different versions. We talked about how there's different versions of the Bible and how Miss Jessie, her Bible, I don't know how well you can see it. It says NIV. Okay, and this is one, um, this one is, gosh, 15 years old, I think we decided, something like that. And they do update the words, and they do change it a little to make sense to, um, you know, you talk a little bit different than your grandparents, and your grandparents talk a little bit different than their grandparents. So, um, you know, they want to make sure that it's accessible and they understand it. So, like I said, I think it's important for um, me to go through that prayer. Um, when it's a little bit different, it reminds me that it's not something I should just memorize and I should just go through um, word by word. I need to know it in my heart and my soul um, and to commit all of me to it when I'm talking to God, okay? 
Um, so I want to go over particularly one part on my paper because I wrote this just in the way that I memorized it, it was thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But here in the NIV, it's um, your kingdom come, your is God, um, your will be done, your God again, on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let's think about that. And what do you think that means? Okay. So I want you to let you know that this prayer that we're talking about, it's we're asking God for help, and we're also telling him, yes, we believe. It's um, an assertion, and it's also kind of a request. Does that make sense? Do you guys, those words, it's um, saying, yep, and please. So think about that. God is going to work through us when we choose to live his way. Um, thy will be done. That's your will be done. What you want to be done is going to be done, God. So we're asking him, um, we're gonna be, we're asking him to help us and we're choosing his way at the same time. Does that make sense? So think about that as you pray and hopefully that helps you if you've been having a hard time praying or if you haven't known exactly um, what to pray about. Go back to that. This is in um, Matthew chapter six. Uh, I mean, you can start the whole bit at verse five. The prayer starts, um, at verse 9, this is what Jesus said is how you should pray. All right, we're going to go over the story now. We've been going through the story of Jesus. So give me one second to take a sip of my coffee, and then we'll get through it. Okay, so parents, you don't know this, but your kiddos probably know that the things that Miss Jessie needs to teach are we need our um, whatever we're learning about. Again, we're un learning about unstuck. Don't give up need my Bible, and I also need my coffee. Your kiddos know that, and you should know that too. Um, anyways, so I'm going to go over our story. We have, um, in April, we went over the story of Easter. We talked about Jesus' crucifixion before that, and the betrayal that happened in the garden. We talked about Jesus being risen, all right? And now we're kind of going over the disciples and what they, how they um, lived after Jesus was not walking with them every day like they were used to. But they believed in his, uh, in his work. They believed that what he was doing was the good thing, the right thing to do. And we're talking about how they, they did that. Um, and I think this is so important like I said it's important for us but it's so important for the disciples determination deciding it's worth it to finish what you started okay so so many times Jesus or the disciples um, probably wanted to say "Ugh, I quit this is too hard <laughs> can't tell you how many times I've oh I quit this is too hard so many times in, in my life the disciples especially, think about where they were. They had Jesus. They saw him performing these miracles. They knew he was a good man. They could, they, they knew it. And then they saw him die in a very awful way, okay? And they're like, well, now what? Well, he was risen from the dead, just like the, the Old Testament, just like their um, prophecies had said. And then after that, he kind of disappeared again. Oh no, these poor guys, what are they gonna do? Well, remember last week we talked about the Pentecost, right? When um, God sent the Holy Spirit to help them out. Do you remember that? When there was wind and fire in the house? Kinda crazy. But then they started to talk in all these tongues. They learned, they were talking in different languages and then they were able to connect with more people thanks to the Holy Spirit, okay? God gave them what they needed every step of the way to keep going. Um, remember Peter, do you remember the 3,000 people that he was able to speak to after the Holy Spirit came and um, gave him the, the ability and the confidence and everything he needed to speak to the crowd? Do you remember that? Okay, so that was all review. Here we are now. We are in Acts, A-C-T-S, Acts, and it's called Acts because, can you guess why? Do you know why? Let me give you a couple hints about it. Okay, 
So it's after the story of, in the Bible, in, if you're going, if you're flipping it page by page, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, right? And then after Acts, the book after that is some letters that Paul wrote. So it's kind of about Jesus' life, and then it's about Paul's life. What happened in between? The disciples, they were acting a lot. They were doing a lot of acts. So it's about the acts of the disciples between the two. Um, and it talks about how they reached people. Okay? So, and that's why this is such a good book to read. Because think about what our mission is. Think about why you are here. Think about why Jesus put you exactly where you, you needed to be and gives you the people in your life um, exactly who he meant to be. Because you are meant to talk about Jesus and to live your life for him and help others live their life for him. And that's what the disciples did. So if you read the Acts, um, you know, Jesus is the person that we should be trying to live exactly like. And the disciples in the books of Acts, they kind of did it first, you know? So it's important to read about them. All right, so here we are in Acts chapter 3. Peter and John, they were walking down the street, um, and they saw this old man begging. He, have you ever seen that before? Maybe you went to downtown Indy or something. Um, even in Lafayette, you sometimes see men on the side of the street begging, sometimes women. Um, and the man asked them for money. And Peter said, Ugh, here, I'm going to read this up. Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have... I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk so I forgot to tell you I said crippled so that meant the old man he couldn't walk he he was not very able to move I think he was sitting on a mat if I remember correctly um so he said walk and let's think about that who have we seen do stuff like that before Jesus right Jesus but now the Holy Spirit's in the picture right and he's able to help people do things. The Holy Spirit is able to help people do things that they, they've never done before, that they wouldn't be able to do without the Holy Spirit. Okay, what do you think happened? The guy walked, the guy walked, and imagine how he felt, and imagine what you would do if you weren't able to walk, you were just like sitting on the floor, on the ground, and it wasn't concrete, it was dirt, and that was your life. And then all of a sudden, you were able to get up and move around. Would you sit back down? I bet you, you would do a happy dance. A really cool one. Maybe the floss. I'm really good at it, but I'm not gonna show you. I'm not that good at it. Um, anyways, okay, so. Now think about if Miss Jessie suddenly stood up and started doing the floss, how many people would come to see that? A lot. Probably everybody in the vicinity because that is cuckoo bananas crazy. So all these people came, right? And they were like, what happened? What happened? And basically, uh, Peter was like, guys, duh. God help me. Jesus help me. That's what happened. Um, he, said, he asserted. He, he told them. He said, Jesus is the Lord. He's the one who helped me help this man get better. And um, the religious leaders, like the ones who killed Jesus, they still don't like Jesus, and they still don't really like the things that he was doing, even through his disciples. So he took Peter and John, they took Peter and John, and they jailed them. They put them in jail. And they're like, seriously, what happened? What happened? And, um, Peter stuck to his story, right? Kept st sticking sticking to his story, even when he was in a sticky situation. Let's think about all the sticking that happened there. And what happened after that? What do you think happened? Well, the religious leaders, they couldn't really keep him in there. They were like, all of these people say that he did it. There's a lot of people here. And that man, he was old and he was crippled and now he's not, I do not understand. So they ended up letting him go. And John, both of them. So they got out of that sticky situation. 
So, they got out, and after that, over 5,000 people were now decided to be followers of God because of what happened that day. Isn't that incredible? I think that's incredible. So, I have, um, in, this is Acts chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. And there he is just asserting. I keep using that word asserting. Do you guys know what that means? He is um, confirming and he is, uh, hmm. he is just making it known. And he's going to keep repeating it, just like we should be, that Jesus is the Lord. We are saved by nobody else. Jesus is the one that saves us. And there is no other name, no other name that can save us. So I want you to think about that assertion. I want you to think about how the assertion, how just saying it over and over and believing it, um, got Peter and John out of their sticky situations and how much good they did, how much of God's will that they did by just keeping that faith that Jesus is Lord and when we do what he wants, when we live for him, he's going to get us through our stuff. All right. So now we're going to do a fun little activity. And um, I'll see you in a sticky minute. Okay. So Peter and John, um, they saw Jesus be in a lot of pain. They saw him die. They saw him come back and then he was gone again. And they have this huge mission, right, of spreading the word to all of the corners of the earth, everywhere on earth, right? Woof! And then they started to do that, and then they were jailed. Ugh! Oh my gosh! Imagine how frustrating it would be to be told to do something, that you have to do something really important, but then you are literally locked up. That's tough. So we're going to talk about how important it is to keep going, even when it gets tough. Okay guys, keep going even when it gets tough. So to stick with our sticky situation theme and tough, I have some ingredients here. Have you guys ever heard of oobleck? Have you heard of it? Okay, I'm going to tell you something. This is a personal fact about Miss Jessie. Are you ready? I was not born with the last name Christian. That's my, my last name now. My last name that I was born with I got that last, first of all, I got the last name Christian when I married Jacob. That was his last name. My last name was, it wasn't Ublek. Close. It was Oblak, right? And um, it, a lot of people thought it was Irish. So they would put like, I don't know if you know about Irish last names, but maybe you've seen like O'Connor or um, what's another O something. I don't know. I don't know, Irish last names often have capital O and then an apostrophe. Okay, so it would be this way for you, capital O, and then apostrophe, and then a capital letter of whatever it is. Let's say O'Finnegan, I don't know. Um, my last name wasn't Irish. It was actually Eastern European, Polish, if you know where Poland is. Um, so it was tough sometimes. And I still kind of have a hard time because that name was my name for 22 years. Um, where they're, it's spelled weird. For some reason, people had a really hard time spelling that last name. They would sometimes put the apostrophe, even though there wasn't one there. Sometimes they would put a C in it, there was no C. Sometimes instead of an A, they would put an E. Anyways, it's kind of a tough name. And not just for that, but also this stinking oobleck. We made this so many times in school. Elementary school, middle school, high school, and we used it for different lessons, and now we're using it in church. I never used it in church. You just happen to have a cool teacher. Anyways, um, so oobleck, right? So now imagine Miss Jessie at school, okay? And the teacher comes and they say, okay, well today we're gonna make oobleck. And then everybody in the class looks right at Miss Jessie and they start laughing. Oh, this stuff gave me the hardest time, I swear. I was always really embarrassed. It's not anything to be embarrassed about, but for some reason, it really got to me. Anyways, we're gonna make it today. I wanna tell you 
somebody makes fun of your name over something like that, it's nothing to worry about. Jesus is Lord and Savior, and he will get you through fourth grade and fifth, all the grades, okay? All right, so we have cornstarch. This is the most basic version of it, okay? And we have water. This is water. I put green food dye in it, and I chose green because green means go. All right, so you want about one, one and a half to two times the amount of water as you do cornstarch. Um, it's pretty variable. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my water in my cornstarch um, and mix it up for you guys. Hi, and welcome back to Kidopolis with Miss Jessie. You might be thinking to yourself, Miss Jessie, that was a weird spot for a break. And if you're thinking that, you're totally right. Um, I'm not making this up. This really just happened. And hopefully you think it's as funny as I do. Mr. Jacob doesn't think this is very funny. Um, I'm going to start with the story time. <laughs> um, this is before smartphones were really a thing. And I was a poor college kid. And I didn't have a printer at my apartment, but I really wanted to make these cookies, okay? Um, they were oatmeal chocolate chip cookies, and I'd never made oatmeal cookies before. I'd only ever made chocolate chip cookies before. Um, and even then, I always used, like, the break and bakes. So anyways, um, I didn't have an iPhone to look at the recipe. I didn't have a cookbook for the recipe. And I definitely didn't have a printer to print it off to take to the kitchen. So, I just took my pen and I wrote down the recipe, and then I went and baked it. And they seemed a little strange when I put them in the oven, and I was like, they'll probably form up. All that liquid in there is going to dry up, and they'll look like cookies when this is all done. No. See, um, when Miss Jessie wrote down the recipe, I forgot the flour. <laughs> and so I forgot the flour in the cookies, and then my cookies weren't cookies. And that was sometime Jacob and I were dating, but we weren't married. So it was a little over 10 years ago. And to this day, Jacob always reminds me whenever I make cookies to put in the flour because sometimes I'm bad at transcribing things. Like our recipe for the oobleck. You want 1.5 to two times as much cornstarch as water. So, Here's what I just mixed. Here's the cornstarch that Jacob just went to the store to get. And how perfect, because part of me, when I realized what I did, I wanted to give up. I wanted to say, you know what? We don't need this part in the lesson. But determination <laughs> is deciding it's worth it. To finish what you started. I started this oobleck and I'm gonna finish it. Just a reminder, keep going even when it gets tough. Or in this case, keep going even when you messed up and you didn't put enough cornstarch and there's nothing you can do other than go to the store. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Jessie just thinks this is such a funny coincidence. So now, um, in proper chemist mode. And that's another fun fact about Miss Jessie. I'm a chemist, so I should know how to bake. I do know how to bake now, guys. I'm a lot better at it now. Next time you see Jacob, hopefully he will verify. I'm, I'm decent at baking now. I'm a lot more careful. Apparently I just didn't carry it over to my oobleck. Anyways, so I didn't measure this. Google the recipe. Maybe we'll put a link with the email this week. We'll put a link with the email this week. All right. So now we have our, it's a little bit better, but right now it's kind of tough to stir. This is pretty typical of the oobleck. It's gonna be tough because um, the corn starts kind of like <laughs> together and the water can't get to the middle of it and make it like gooey, okay? It's still pretty much liquidy. Yeah, a little bit more. We're doing great today. So, you know your oobleck is all good and stirred when 
take a big spoonful of it and it tastes like lime jello no don't do that please don't do that you guys that's awful this is look at oh, it's looking a little better right you can't do that with water it's gonna be like a little ribbon I'm gonna put a little bit more in but I'm gonna do that with you not looking so you don't have to watch me stir again but then we're gonna use this oobleck this sticky slime I'm not even gonna touch it yet I will soon um to go over our memory verses okay so give me one second I'll be right back phew I'm glad we got the stay fresh no mess version of the cornstarch I think this could have been a lot messier than it turned out all right so we got this is what it looks like now watch this is fun Ooh, isn't that neat so it's called a non-Newtonian fluid, which I'm not gonna teach you about that. Your teachers can teach you about it. But the thing that you need to know is that it's cool, it's kind of sticky, and it definitely makes a mess. And it's fun to play with. Okay, but we're gonna use this to help us practice our memory verses, okay? I don't know how well it's gonna work. It worked better in my brain, but that's okay. We have memory verse which this is I'm saying like first grade and up okay first grade and up ish if you think if you're younger and you think you can do it that is a-okay with me our memory verse comes from Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 let us not become tired of doing good at the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up, okay? So can you guys memorize that? Have you tried memorizing it? So this might work better if there's a little bit more water in this. But um, what you can do is I put my, my oobleck, my slime in a bag, okay? And what you can do is kind of just draw in your hands the the words that you're saying so yeah it's not working that well but that's okay so maybe put a little bit more water in the bag when you do this so that you can really see the words better but right let us it's kind of a long one to write but when you write things it helps you memorize it an alternative version which i definitely want you to get your parents permission for before doing it Take a spoon. Maybe don't do this directly on your table like Miss Jessie, but I'm a grown up so I can. So let, and I'm gonna write in cursive because it's easier. Let, don't forget to cross the T. Let, okay. Us and write it out like that, okay? One more version, which I'm not going to do. You have your bag, you tried it, it didn't work, the spoon's not working great. You can snip the end and then become a cake decorator, okay? That sounds fun. Maybe I actually will do that. Hold, please. Okay. Miss Jessie's having way too much fun with this lesson. Um, I have a big mess to clean up. So we're gonna go over um, our memory verse, the, the versity, if you will. Versity, we have versity and junior versity. I hope I'm not the only one who thinks that's funny. Um, in high school, for my little kiddos, maybe if I clue you and then you'll think it's funny. The older kids are the varsity team. And then a little bit younger, and maybe the ones who need a little bit more practice are on the junior varsity, okay? So that's why Miss Jessie thinks varsity and junior varsity is funny. Anyways, so the verse that I wrote on the table, let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. 
All right, and make sure, by the way, if you're doing this, you have your parents' full permission, they understand the extent of this mess, and maybe think about doing it outside. All right, now we're gonna move on to the junior varsity. And this is in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. Do you remember why Miss Jessie likes this book? Do you guys remember? It's a fun word. This is written to the people in a place called Thessalonica. And I don't know why. I just think that's fun to say. I hope you do too. Okay, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. Also, this might be a better one to write out. It's a little bit shorter. As for you, brothers, brothers, sisters, like, they're talking to the people in, in, Thess in Thessalonica, but it's talking to me and to you, Jacob. Okay, got it. As for you, brothers, do not grow tired in doing good. All right, guys, don't grow tired of doing good. Don't grow tired of doing the right thing. Trust me. I know what that's like. But the important thing is that we're, when we do things, we're doing it for God and not for ourselves. When we're growing tired, are we growing tired because we're not, things are going exactly our way, things are getting a little tough and maybe we don't wanna do things like this anymore? This is definitely speaking to Miss Jessie this week. So, I hope that this helps you. I hope that you have fun with this lesson. Um, we're gonna go into prayer time. And I'm probably still gonna play with the slime. I'm just not gonna lie. One more reminder about the memory verses. Sorry, this is a little, we're going a little back and forth. That's okay. This slime is really getting to me. Um, I'm just going to say it like it is. This week, the prize for the memory verse, it's not this. This is too much. I'm not going to bring this to you guys. But you will have a custom slime. Maybe glittery. Maybe it has some like fun little squishy balls in it might even have stars in it. Custom slime made by Miss Jessie dropped off at your doorstep when I get that video. Even if you've already done this month, go ahead and send it again. Can't wait to see it, okay? Okay, guys, so we have some prayers to go over. This week, I'm gonna try and reach out to your parents and I'm going to ask them maybe if they are comfortable with it and if you are comfortable with it, to just give me a video, take a video of a little update in your life of any prayers that you want to share. You tell me exactly what is okay to share and what is not okay to share and I will make it happen. But I miss you guys a lot and I'm sure a lot of you guys miss your church friends. So I want you guys to see each other. I'm going to hopefully try to make this happen. I have a personal prayer request this week. This week has been really hard for Miss Jessie. Been having a lot of hard time with Staying at home. I was supposed to be on a trip this week that I've been looking forward to for years. Years I've been looking forward to it. I was not supposed to be at my kitchen table right now. Um, Just been kind of bummed. Kind of having a hard time. You guys missing your friends at school? What's going on? Tell me what's going on. I know that another reason that I'm bummed is my girls are missing their school. Esme and Phoebe miss their school. Heidi misses church so much. She asks us every single day, every single day when we're going to go back to church. And oh, it's hard for a mom to see that in her kiddos. So guys, if you could just pray for my heart to um, keep finding joy in what's going on. And just know that this is God's plan, that his will is being done, that what needs to happen is happening. Okay? I'm going to pray for myself too. And I'll pray for you guys. All right? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for um, not only like not only just Jesus. We love Jesus and we're so grateful for him. And I, that is, his life was amazing. But I'm so grateful that his life is written out in the way that we can reach it. I am thankful for the lessons that we have, the people who write up lessons like this to um, help us read this Bible and make sense of it so that we can do what we need to do, that, so that we can do the will of God, that we can understand why and how we should be following Jesus. 
Wow, that is so cool. That is, oh, I think I just think it's so cool that you gave us, you give us everything we need. You give us all the tools we need. And I'm just so grateful. I want to praise you so much for that, Jesus. Um, Lord, I pray that that attitude that I had just now is the one that I keep in my heart. One that is just so sure um, of who you are and your plan. And you keep my heart joyful, my eyes towards you. And I hope you do that with my friends. I hope that anybody who is having a hard time missing their friends, missing school, um, you know, this has been a weird couple months. And, you know, we have a lot of great things to help us through it. But, you know, it, you know, Lord, you know it's hard. So I ask that you help my friends out with that. I pray, Lord, that you help us connect through this time, that when we go back to church, it'll feel like no time has passed at all. Um, we get to see each other and have fun. And, Lord, on that, I just pray for everybody to stay healthy. Pray for everybody to stay happy. Um, help us get through this time with um, n not only our eyes on you, but also um, towards each other as well. Putting others before ourselves. Um, Lord, I thank you for everything. I pray that we are doing the things that you want us to do. And I pray that you uh, give us gentle reminders of that. Um, love you, God. Pray it all in your son's name. Amen. Okay, guys, that is all I have for this week. I have a big old mess to clean up, um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I hope you have a great week. I'm going to reach out to your parents, so be thinking about those prayer requests that you have um, or any stories that you want to share. Let me know, okay? Keep going. Don't give up, even when it gets tough. Anything that you decide is worth doing is worth finishing even if it's making a giant mess on your kitchen table. All right, but especially, especially when it's the will of God. Got it? Got it? All right, have a great week. Bye, guys. Was it worth it? Yes. <laughs>